All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Doug Childress. I'm the CEO of Turnium Technology Group, uh, Toronto Stock Exchange, listed on the V. Uh, you'll find us as TTGI. Um, I've got laryngitis on the way over from Australia, so you have to bear with me if you can't uh, hear me. I'll try to do my best. Um, I thought before I got into this presentation today is actually do something a little bit different because I'm sure you get bored to death with PowerPoint, and I've presented about a million times. Who in this room would honestly say that you don't fear technology? And I think the answer to that question is every single person in this room would say, I fear technology in some way, shape, or form. We hear AI. We hear of all these things that are coming at us, and they're real. We're working on some projects right now that would absolutely blow your mind as far as what's available and what is there now and what's coming. But before I get into the presentation, I'll tell you a little bit about me. 38 years ago, I started my career as a technologist. What is a technologist? It's a person that can take and understand a problem and use technology to solve that. And I've done that over the course of my time, working for the likes of Control Data Corporation back in the 80s, before we had PCs, before the internet, there was no Windows. Then I went on to build my first computer company at age 24. That company I ran for 14 and a half years, and then I learned a very tough lesson when Dell computers got into the game. Where we used to make $3,000 on a PC, we now made maybe 300 if we were lucky. I'd also jumped into the dial-up internet business, had tons of modems, DSL comes to town. And before long, 14 and a half years later, I was bankrupt, lost everything I had. I decided then and there I'd never do it again. Well, this is my fifth tech company. I moved to Australia after meeting a girl. She told me she lived at the beach. I didn't realize it was so far away. I joined a company there that had nine customers. I left them two and a half years later after I rolled out a national network, 38,500 customers. I handed my CEO a, a business plan, and I said, the future of technology is voice over IP. He handed it straight back to me and said, three years in, from now, it might be. I re resigned on the spot. A few friends said, we'll back you. They put in 400,000. I sold the business eight years later. 12 million in revenue, 1 million EBITDA, and I sold it for $20 million. So I buy a resort, as you do. I decide I'm getting out of technology. I've had enough of it, right? My pet woodpecker, AKA my ex-wife, she starts nagging at me and I decide I'm gonna start another tech company. And I spent months trying to write a business plan. 2015, I'm thinking every gadget known to man you can go buy or download, there's every app. So what would I do? And I wrote a business plan about what was missing. And what was missing is all the gaps in technology. And today, this is so relevant to the question that I just asked you. Do you fear technology? And the reason for that question is, is because cybersecurity is so real right now that it can take all of your money. It can, it can rob you blind. It can take your businesses to its knees. And it's important for vendors to know technology like I do to be successful. With that said, let me tell you how in, my, in this company, I have this phrase, let's get it done. IT is what we do. So when we talk about, I got to go through the disclaimer slide. Sorry, let me just get there. And this is all on the... Uh, uh, presentation you can download. So the business plan that I built was all about how do we get from a cold lead to a customer? And how do we do that as efficiently as we possibly can? And how do we measure the outcome? And what we found was is when we, and I'll talk about Turnium in just a second, our platform was take a cold lead. Anybody in this room can say, well, what about this industry? grab that lead, clean the data, put it through AI, and push it all the way through to a quote. And that's what we've built. 
And when I met Turnium, they had one product selling that product through 70 worldwide channel partners. Now, I built my platform to be white label. We could sell it anywhere in the world, brand it as any company, and just sell it repeatedly. So we met them, and we started looking. Turnium, they had an average recurring revenue of $33. My recurring revenue was $220. Put those together, that's $250, roughly, per user in every organization. And you think about this. If you go hire one IT guy for a 30-staff organization, you are paying that IT guy, labor alone, $350 per user per month. That's an average price. Well, I started thinking about, well, what if we could just take that tech layer completely out and give the customer all of the tech, all of the products, all of the services at $220 a month? Customers started to love it, especially when we got into what it is we provide. But before we jump into the detail of that, just have a look at where we are. So we're a, turn, we're a Vancouver based headquartered, dual listed on the Toronto um, and Frankfurt Stock Exchange. We've got a competitive SD WAN product, which was Turnium. Now I'll just clarify something. We completed our deal on the 22nd of August. Not a few, just a few weeks ago, right? There's an interesting thing I'll tell you in a second. We built a technology as a service platform. We've developed an AI-driven marketing tool. And together, we're going to be able to sell these things and give companies, um, you know, complete alignment on as far as the products and services they may have, but also what we have. So we can align our back end, um, back office and gain synergies out of them. So to the market next year, we've given guidance of 11 to 14 million. We feel pretty comfortable that we'll land, we're in, a, we end on September, we'll land at a roughly 12.5 mil revenue. This is organic. And we'll have EBITDA somewhere between a million to 1.25. So, Back to the kid in me, back to the entrepreneur in me, when I sit down and sell technology, I don't sell technology and talk about the widgets. The widgets were for the geeks that work in the tech team, right? I sit down with CEOs and CIOs and business leaders and say, how many decisions have you made in your life where you said, business, we're going to do this? And you walk down the hall to the IT team and ask them, is it possible? It is possible when you deal with us. Because what we do is we protect the key decision makers and take the fear factor away and say, just make the decision. We'll work with you. We'll deliver it. We'll get it done. So when I got involved with Turnium, the original company that acquired us, they had an SD-WAN product. Now, that's a buzzword out in the world that a lot of people do not understand. Think of it as a hand connected to the Internet. If you chop three of my fingers off, I still have a hand and two fingers. Those two fingers are still connected to the Internet. The SD-WAN product gets a company comfort that they will stay connected to the Internet, even when major telco providers go down two years ago, I won't name the name, but you could have a Starlink, a mobile signal, a fiber optic service. The SD-WAN makes sure that you're always up. It works so well that if I was on a video call with you right now and we lost those same three fingers, you would not even know it. So I love that product, but they only had one product when I met them. Along the landing acquired another company that dipped the toe in the water about managed services, and that was called Tenacious Networks here in Vancouver. Now, they're an MSP, and another acronym that you need to sometimes explain, the MSPs are there to look after the servers, the, the PCs, and do all the techie stuff. And that was good because then it got Turnium to think, well, maybe this MSP's got legs. When they got to meet me, I said, well, we do it on steroids. 
we actually have a virtual workspace where you can open a brand new Apple or a Lenovo or what, pick it. I don't care. Open a device, turn it on, and you're back where you left off. And that was a pretty attractive product. But we do that white label anywhere in the world. We provide the product, the service, the solution, and we provide the cyber security wrapped around that. So as a customer, if you're afraid of technology, what do you want? You want somebody to come in and work with you. So what we do is we take our total stack and we provide that to an OEM partner and they can put their own brand on it or we can do it for them or they can just refer customers to us. We'll do it in any way that we feel like it would service the client best, but we build a fortress around them. Now, some people say, well, anybody can do that. Okay, well, there's not another company on the planet that's done it, but they might. But the thing is, ours works so well that you can take our technology stack and you can go to your cyber security insurance provider and they'll give you a 15 to 25% discount. It's HIPAA compliant, NIST, GDPR. It's got certifications to back it. So when we talk to a partner and we go, how many products do you sell your customer? And they say one or two or three. I say, well, it's like holding a dozen of eggs. You've got three eggs in your carton. Let us help you fill them up. We can help them increase their revenue by more than six times. Back to the footprint, back to the strategy. Why did I sell my company to a TSX listed company here in Canada? We're about equal size. The reason I did it, I took it all in shares. No cash, because I believe in what I can do, and I know that what we've done and together is the great things that we'll do. We'll leverage this channel partner, and we don't need to expand our team exponentially. We just deliver our products and services to a team that sell that into their own client base. When you look at how we're compared, you look at some of the other um, SaaS businesses out there, they're averaging six times revenue to calculate their enterprise value. We're at 2.3, and evidence shows down here some of the recent trades that support the six times revenue multiple up top. So we're grossly undervalued in my view. When you look at our um, share cap table, the red box, there's been a lot of stuff happened back there when that blue line started. That blue line started, and the strike price was 56 cents. And there was debt, and there was a lot of other stuff, and there was a loan to clean up, and people didn't believe there was going to be a survival period. And then there was another raise of 3.5 mil, and that cleaned up some of that noise, and now we're starting to get the traction. We are only just beginning. We only signed a deal four weeks ago. But the thing that I want to draw your attention to is the red box. I'm the largest shareholder. I took it all in shares. I'm standing up here and telling you what we've done, how we're going to do it, and where we're going to go. And I believe I've set a target internally for $100 million revenue. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy, and $20 mil in EBITDA. And how we're going to get there is through growth, organic growth, and through acquisitions. Now, I have belief in this company and I also have belief in my board of directors. Um, the guy that's here that would typically be up on the stage last year, Garf, uh, Ralph Garcia, um, he's got a very successful track record. He sits on a um, board of directors of a $4 billion technology company. So he knows this space fairly well. Um, we've got other guys here that have been founders, uh, worked in Rogers, uh, lots of sales experience, lots of M&A experience, and lots of accounting experience. So I feel like I've got a great team of mentors when I need to be put back on the rail or I just need advice. 
and I often talk to these uh, to the team. So the corporate summary, I told you, you wouldn't need to bring that card out on me yet. Um, when we look at the corporate summary, we are undervalued by 2.3 times looking at our competitors at six. 22% um, of the shareholders and 21% are strategic investors, and I'm one of them. Um, we're in it for the long game. We believe in the company. Cash flow positive uh, for Turnium, so TTGI has been cash flow positive since May. Uh, the clarity side of the business will be cash flow positive coming out of September. We build a highly scalable platform. And on this note, I want to bring your attention back to something I said earlier. Four and a bit weeks, well, four weeks ago we closed, four weeks and two days or three days. In that period, first day of September until the 16th day of September, our sales team quoted $960,000 worth of new business. Now, will they win all of that? No. Statistics that we're seeing says we'll win about 60% of that. So we're starting to see the inertia, and we're at a very, very early stage. Um, I guess the other thing that's really changed the lives of everybody in the organization is what used to be just a product company is now a technology as a service company. And I think that is going to kind of change the mindset. I'm seeing it shift inside Eternium. Uh, the staff are now becoming a lot more engaged because it gets boring selling one product. But now they can see the host of opportunities and open up new conversations with our channel partners, selling new things and having a reason to go back and talk to them. So as I say, um, we have an internal kind of a motto, and that is, let's get it done. Customer comes with us with a problem. That's what we're here to do. We're there to solve it. Now, was there any questions that you guys might have? And I left a bit more time because it is tech, and oftentimes people have questions. All right. Oh, we got one over here. Uh, you mentioned you're looking to grow by acquisitions. Do you have any? I mean, I think you're new as the CEO. Do you have any kind of lined up at the moment? I do. Thanks. That's a great question. We have a acquisition of a value-added reseller. They only sell hardware. They've been around 35 years. The managing director, 77 years old. I've known him for nine years. He wants to fall. He wants us to buy him. He's got 20. 4,400 users, 3,500 customers. Not one of our product or services do they sell currently today. Now, that company is uh, it's an Australian-based company. And just on that note, I'll come back on something here for a minute, but they're Australian-based. Um, we believe we could get that deal done this side of the end of January. Uh, 57 million in top line revenue, 2 million in EBITDA. That would take us combined into 70 some odd mil, and we would be the top within the top 10 tech companies in the TSXV. What's your investor relations plan for the next six, 12 months? What's the investor? Investor relations plan. Yeah. Yep. Uh, look, the, at this moment, um, we're looking for strategic investors. Um, at some stage, we'll probably get to the point where, you know, we need to do a share split, um, you know, and try to get the number of shares down. There's 251 million shares on, on issue. That seems to scare some investors off. Um, so our investment right now is to get a cornerstone secure a couple of acquisitions, get to the 100 mil revenue, and then, you know, it's going to be a game change from that point on. But we work through, um, we've got an investment relations manager that works with us. Uh, we're doing events like Canstar, Cantech over in uh, Toronto here at Planet Microcap. Um, yeah, just uh, 
work with the investors that we've dealt with in the past and bring on a few strategics. Well, I hope I've told you enough about what we do. Thank you for uh, not wearing my voice out, and I'm glad it came to the party just in time. So thank you.